Hi everyone, welcome to the Q&A about creating and launching simple online courses. Uh, Tad wanted me to do this for you all because I've had um, quite a lot of experience doing this. Over the past couple of years, I have created and launched over a dozen online courses by myself. Um, and I think I should mention, I don't even have a virtual assistant. So I literally do everything by myself. I'm the one who teaches the online courses, creates them. This is all my original material that I create. Um, and I also clean my own toilets. So <laughs> I, do, I do it all. And uh, I'm grateful that I can still maintain a really good uh, life, work-life balance. And I, you know, so, um, so the key really is doing it in a light and simple way, which I think if you learn how to launch online programs, online courses uh, elsewhere, you typically learn the product launch formula and it's a very involved and laborious and um, kind of a high risk, high stress situation because there's that dream of, oh, this better be a you know, five figure launch or something like that or six figure launch. And when it comes to that kind of uh, pressure that you give on yourself and probably at that point, you have some kind of a team doing it. Um, there's, a, there's a big cost, there's a big risk. And unfortunately, given that I've been doing this for 10 years, um, actually in the beginning, I, I used to do these big giant launches that were you know, five, six figure launches. And I honestly burned out doing that. I made a lot of money doing it, but I was like, I can't, I can't do this. For, <laughs> I did it for like three, four years, and I'm like, oh God, this is, this is too much. And so I basically, I've been in business for 10 years, actually 11 years now. And for the first, basically for the first half of my business, for the first four or five years, I did those kinds of intense product launches, five figure launches usually. And then for the past five, and then I burned out and I'm like, I don't, I, I don't want to do this anymore. This is terrible. And a lot of people do. Uh, a lot of people that I, I started uh, with back in those days, joint venture partners are no longer around and there's only a few people still around people like tad who don't do those giant launches and wear themselves out so i really hope that i can inspire you to consider a simpler lighter model which i think is actually better in terms of marketing and, and business building because lighter and simpler means more nimble and more um able to test the market instead of oh my god this thing is the best thing in the you know since sliced bread and i better put you know thousands of dollars or, or more into launching this thing and usually it doesn't work it does you don't even get that money back because i've worked with so many people partners and clients on doing those giant launches so anyway I, like i said the first half of my business first five years was in doing those launches or helping other people with those giant launches and then this past five years so that, Years six through 10 of my business, now I'm year 11, has been unraveling uh, all that high risk uh, product launch, internet marketing type of strategy and coming back to a much more, I like to say authentic, but basically a much more human scale uh, and more sustainable, like personally sustainable scale for, for doing business as a solopreneur. And so I, I have, I know I don't have, I haven't had any a virtual assistant for a couple of years now. What I've learned to do is to automate what I can with Zapier. For those of you who don't know Zapier, it's a software that can do uh, so much for you in terms of automating things. Z a p i e r dot com. So you might want to look into that and start learning that yourself. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about that too. And so. Lighter, simpler launches allow you to be more nimble, uh, be much less risk, and be able to basically move forward to test the market and really figure out what people, you know, the way I think about our calling, sort of our purpose in our business, I think of, I think of, I think of marketing as, as the activity of a business trying to find its calling. And a calling, in my, in my opinion, is where, you know, not my opinion, I should say there's an old quote by Frederick Buchner that says, it's where your deep gladness meets the world's deep hunger, right? It's that intersection that, like, imagine two circles. It's like your deep gladness 
and then the world's deep hunger and where those two intersect is your calling. And how do you find that intersection? That, that's, that's really where uh, everything becomes so much easier in terms of marketing. I mean, kind of like what Tad talks about. Tad talks about how marketing is not trying to push people, you know, to, to, to make them buy something, right? But marketing is really about filtering out who is really right for this offer and to have an honest conversation with them about it. And so the way I do it is by launching simply. Because when you have a conversation with a potential client, you know, you can only do it like one-to-one, but if you want to launch courses, you need to have many people buy it, uh, hopefully dozens, if not hundreds or more. So it's really about launching more frequently different ways of talking about your work and different aspects of your work until you discover, oh, you know, I have this big house, which is your, your work, your body of work is like this big house. Okay. And this big, not even a house, I would say it's more like an estate, you know, or, or a castle, right? Imagine that's your body of work. And there's many ways into the castle. You can come in through the garden. You can come in through the bridge. You can come in through the back door. You can come in through the gate. There's that's, that's lots of different doors. Once you come in through the garden, there's like five different doors you can enter. And so think of your body of work as that castle, and there's lots of different ways. And you just want, you're really curious, how are people going to, to want to come into this castle? Or would they want to come to the garden? Or would they rather come into the bridge? Or would they rather come in through you know, the field? Or how do they want to come in? And when they come into the garden, are they going to pick the red door or the green door or the purple door? How are they going to come in? They're, they're going to climb the stairs and then go in? Or how are they going to come in? So once they come in, then they're in a room you, you know you, you you they they came into the through the red door there's a red foyer and then oh yes this is what i expected and then they see oh my god there's so many more rooms that i can go explore then they see the rest of your body of work but you have to test out which color door they're going to like coming in more and this is where we start testing the different offers different titles of your courses the different courses themselves etc okay so um, uh, please go ahead, those of you who are here live, uh, and post your questions below and let me know. Um, uh, what I'd love to know is if you haven't yet launched an online course yet, what's been your block? Uh, where are you uh, feeling like, okay, if I, if I understood this, then I feel more, more comfortable launching the online course. So where, where are you with that? And I'm just going to be be silent uh, for a moment while you, and or the other questions, if you have launched courses and it didn't work as well as you wanted to, what would you like to improve on, okay? So I'm gonna take a moment and look at your comments and uh, give you the chance to also comment below on your, your questions. Great. So, um, all right. Great, great, great questions. So, um, first of all, let, let, let me give you a sense of where your online courses are going to fit in with your model, because, you know, some of you are saying, well, I'm working on this business or that business. Um, where does online course fit into your business model? And, I want to, and eventually I'm going to finally do a, do a diagram on this, but I don't have a diagram yet. You have to imagine yourself or, or, or go ahead and draw, draw a piece of paper here. So I want you to imagine a series of circles. Okay. And um, I know, has anyone heard me talk about this before? The concentric circle business model? Go ahead and comment below. If you've heard me talk about this before, then maybe this will add to your, your understanding of it or any questions you have about it. So I want you to imagine that you are in the circle of the concentric, you are in the center of the concentric circle. That's you, your business, and you know, 
that's where the creativity comes from. It's, you can imagine this as the sun, okay? This is actually, that's a, that's a better analogy. It's like the sun, right? And it's like the hottest, you are the hottest right in the center. And then just outside of, of your circle is your one-to-one -one clients, your, your premium clients, the people who are paying you the most and therefore have the most access to you and therefore you have the most responsibility for. Okay, so most payment, most access, most responsibility for their transformation, right? That's the closest to you circle. And then one circle out from that is your group coaching programs or your group coach group, group client programs. Some of you might be doing small group programs or larger ones, but it's basically where they have some, they have some regular access to you in a group setting. And sometimes they, you, you know, your group programs may give you, give them some one-on-one -on -one access to you as well. Some of you are, are, might be in Tad Hargrave's mentor, mentoring program, mentorship group. And that's an example of, of a group program. Is anyone here in Tad's mentoring group? Um, let me know if you are, and because yeah, that's, that's an example of group, where the mentoring group or group program is where they pay less than they would per month than your one-to-one, -one, okay? One-to-one -one would pay more per month if, you know, group program pays less per month, okay, less, less than the one-on-one, -on -one, less access to you one-to-one, -to -one, okay? And you have less responsibility for, for each person in the group compared to your one-on-one -on -one clients, okay? And Bernadette's in the mentoring group, yes. So beyond the outside that circle of mentoring group is your online courses. So this is where the online courses fit. Your online courses are scalable. The mentoring group is not scalable because you can only serve a certain number of people in a group program setting. The one-on-one -on -one obviously is not scalable. Okay, so this is where, you know, if you were to do one-on-one -on -one only um, for the rest of your life, you know, you, you have to keep on, uh, you have to work very hard and to be able to save enough money to retire, et cetera. With a mentoring group, with a group program, you know, you can scale that a little bit more and you could, you know, maybe earn a little bit more, you know, et cetera. With the online courses, you could, so this is how I define an online course in the way that I define it. It is unlimited, okay, uh, in terms of how many people can sign up. It's a, it's a truly DIY, do-it-yourself type of experience. Now, you may still have a monthly Q&A for, like, this is my model, okay? And I want to show you what I do is once a month, I, I do a bonus, what I call a bonus Q&A call. Um, for any of you who have signed up for any of my courses, you, you know this, and I've just put the, put the link there in the chat. It's georgecow.com slash bonus QA, and I'll just share my screen so you can see how, uh, what it looks like here. Um, so this is how I give people access to me who buy a scalable online course, right? It says, hey, did you purchase one of my courses within the past three months? If yes, you'll receive recordings for these bonus Q&As, but if you want to attend live, you know, sign up below, right? And then I say, well, what kind of things, things you can ask? And then I always have uh, basically two times, a 9 a.m. Pacific time and a 3 p.m. Pacific. So this, this 3 p.m. Pacific is good for like Australia, Asia, obviously North and South America. This 9 a.m. Pacific is good for North, South America and Europe. And so it's like two, two different times, two different days. And uh, so this is how I give people access to me, even though the online course is a scalable model. Does that make sense? That's what I recommend really as well. So um, I'm really just giving you what I, what I recommend as, as a business model, okay? And, and I, okay, so the online course, obviously they pay less than they would. Uh, compared to the mentoring or group coaching program and they have relatively less access to you a lot less access to you and they um, you are less responsible for them so this is really important to, to talk about this is where a lot of a lot of people I notice are kind of falling down or, or getting to, into trouble with their online courses is they give themselves and this CB recognizes they give themselves too much pressure uh, in in the transformation they must make for the students of the online course. Do you, do you have you have you ex have you thought of that? Have you have you experienced that 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 feeling? It's like oh my god, this course must change people's lives. You know, it must. You know, 
every person who takes this course must go through this radical transformation. No, remember that the it's 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 like the sun, you know. Like by the by the third by the third level out, it's relatively less warm and and it's it's less responsibility. So it, because the online course model is a do it yourself and scalable. What I mean by scalable is it doesn't matter if ten people buy it or a thousand people buy it. You don't do any additional work. This is important because if you're doing a lot more work for every person who buys it, that's not an online course in the way that I define it. That's now a group coaching program or a group mentoring program. You see, because every person who comes in, you feel responsibility for, you spend time with them, you, have, you, know, you only have a limited number. But online courses, 10, 000, maybe 10,000 people will buy it eventually. Okay, so that's what I want you to really consider. And by the way, please feel free to comment below uh, if you if you hear any concepts that you think are are useful to you, because I always love to know what's really landing with you. Otherwise, I have no idea. Um, even just a few words is really helpful. Or if you have any questions, um, so um, so so that's the that's the third level out. You know, you one on one is the first level. Group program is the second level. Online course is the third level. Do it yourself, scalable. The fourth level out of your business model is books and audiobooks. So Kindle, paperback, Audible, okay, books. And books are obviously, they cost less than an online course. Um, they have almost no access to, to the author. You buy a book, you don't go, hmm, I'm gonna call up Michael and say, what did you mean by this par paragraph, right? Whereas with an online course, you could have some bonus Q&A and go, George, what did you mean by course session number three when you said this? Well, I, I'll answer. So I don't have a bonus Q&A for the book buyers, right? That's because that's even more like maybe a thousand people will buy your online course or 10,000 people will buy your book or vice versa. It could be smaller scale. A hundred people buy your online course, a thousand people buy your book. So the book and, and do you feel responsible to the people who buy your book for profound, deep transformation for every reader? That, that would be ridiculous, right? If you, if, right? Like if you buy a book, you don't expect the author to call you up and go, Helene, did you read the book yet? I'll call you next week. Helene, did you read the book yet? <laughs> no, you don't. But with a one-on-one -on -one client where you have the most responsibility, you go, hey, um, we talked about that, that change you were going to make. How come you didn't make that change? Like you could be more, right, more accountable to the one-on-one -on -one clients and to your group, group clients as well. So books are the you know, scalable paid model uh, where you're not – really not responsible for deep transformation is response the response in other words as you go out the responsibility becomes more and more on the client or the student or the reader you see what i mean it's you can kind of see this this model here um because it's more and more do it yourself so and then finally the last the fifth circle out it's everybody okay so fifth circle out is completely scalable and that would be your free content your social media posts, your blog posts, your YouTube videos, your Instagram stories, all of all the free content that you might make. It's truly scalable. It doesn't matter if a million people saw your YouTube video or if one person saw it, you don't pay anything else. You don't, you don't have any other work to do, right? Except maybe comments to, you might want to respond to. So basically uh, you have the least responsibility for the free content. It's free, right? And then they have the least access to you compared to the other levels. Actually, with, with my book readers, I even have them fill out a book, book survey. Uh, you know, I have it like after the second chapter of my book, I always have, hey, you know, I'd love for you to fill out the survey. Um, and when they fill out the survey, they get to ask me a question that I like to actually email them back and respond to it. So I actually do have email contact with my book readers. But, but can you see how this model might work for your business, this concentric circle model? Where are you at? I'm really curious. Which one, of, which one of these levels do you already have? So you in the center, one-on-one, -on -one, group programs, online courses, books, and audiobooks, and then free content, which is for everybody. So do you have any questions about this, first of all, and, and therefore where you, where you place the importance and the, and the transformation and the pricing of your online, uh, online courses?
Okay, good. So Gabriel says, I have one-to-one -one group classes and free content. So then I would ask well, Gabriel, your group classes, you might want to now segment out into, into um, you know, higher touch group versus a do-it-yourself online course where, again, 10,000 people could take it or one person could take it. It's the same, same amount of work. And the online, yeah, so that's, that's what I would suggest and, and ask. Um, Bernadette says, I'm in a group, but not, not much going with one-on-one -on -one yet. So, and then some of you said, I have one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Um, here's the thing. I have, you know, I have clients who say they don't want to do one-on-one. -on -one. They just want to do, do scalable things. And other clients say, oh, I'm not ready to do courses. I'm just, I'm only doing one-on-one -on -one right now. It's, it's, it's not that you have to go in that order. So I just, I want to be clear. It's not that you have to do one-on-one -on -one first in a business model, then group, then. No, you could start at any level you want. And if you want to make money faster, one-on-one -on -one is the way to make money the fastest because you, you charge the most. So you have to convince the fewest people to buy from you. You just, can, you know, you just do enough marketing for 10 people to sign up with you and you, you, know, you have much more money than you do enough marketing and only get 10 book readers. So this is where I, I, I look at people doing massive book launches or, or just book launches and they work so damn hard launching a book and they have like 300 sales, <laughs> you know, like 500 sales. I'm like, wow, all that work, you could have launched an online course and you would have made 10 times the amount of money. Or you could have launched a one-on-one -on -one service and, and made 10, 10 to 20 times as much money. It's like people do these, these massive, so much effort launching a book. It's like, come on. And I get it. Launching a book can bring you additional, you know, clients for other levels. But, but uh, you know, it, it's just think about, think about the, if, if making money is, is, is a priority for you, then understand that the thing that's closest to the center of the sun will make the most money with the least effort, generally speaking. So um, now, now one, 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 uh, one, um, uh, one thing I'll have to say is that one-on-one -on -one is probably easiest to launch. And then group programs are actually ironically not as easy to launch because you, you know, it's kind of this in between a online course and a one-on-one -on -one group program, the pricing is also sometimes awkward, et cetera. So I, I would actually say one-on-one -on -one is easiest to launch and then an online course is probably the second easiest to launch. So let's talk about launching the online course. Oh, and Helene says, can you clarify a big launch compared to a small launch? Um, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start uh, putting, putting these questions on, uh, putting these questions on, on, on the document so that we know what we're talking about here. And I'll answer the other questions as well earlier. We've been uh, up to now, now um, talking, about, talking about biz models and concentric circles. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about big launch versus a small launch, right? So a big launch is where you're like, I'm gonna ask all my friends to help me, you know, get the word out about this and I'm going to prepare multiple videos that go in a sequence and I'm gonna make people opt in and they're gonna get the videos and then they're gonna get this PDF and they're gonna get a Facebook group and this is all this big thing before they get the final. All right, the, the shopping cart is open. You know, the shopping cart is open for like five days. And then you close the shopping cart. <laughs> Have you all seen this? You close the shopping cart because now it looks very scarce. And then it's like, oh, we're gonna, you know, the shopping cart is closed. And then you suddenly open the shopping cart again for another few days. This is internet marketing man manipulation one-on-one, -on -one, which is what I, I, I always talk about, you know, kind of laugh at and, and say, well, maybe we don't have to do that kind of stuff, really. Versus a small launch is kind of what I do. A small launch is basically this, all right? Let me, let me tell you. A small launch is basically this. Two emails. Uh, one is early bird. One is regular price, okay? Um, uh, three social media posts, okay? Um, uh, uh, let's see, uh, clarify, um, vote on the title of the course, okay? That's one social media post. The second one is pre-launch, pre-launch, pre-launch slash early bird price, okay? And the third one is it's ready, it's ready to go. Um, sales, okay. Sales, sales page is, is ready for you. Okay. <laughs> sales page is ready for you, you know, regular price. Okay. And, uh, sorry, let me, let me, uh, let me do something here. 
And like I said, any questions you have about any of this, please feel free to, to ask, okay? So three social media posts, and that's it. Uh, you might have maybe, maybe JV, maybe, maybe you have um, a good friend, colleague, you know, colleague wi willing to promote for you. You know, good friends, a few. Maybe a few, right? A few good friends, colleagues willing to promote for you. That is a small launch. And this is what I do every single month. Now, some of my courses are two months courses. Oh, and that's why I do this every other month. But most of my courses are one month courses. And this, what I just outlined for you, is very, very doable on a monthly basis. Can you see why this is doable? Because two emails is, right, it's doable. Right? One is like, hey, I want to let you know I'm so proud that um, I'm going to be uh, doing this course. And if you want to buy it before I have the sales page together um, you know, and get the early bird price or what I call the pre-launch price, go for it. You know, uh, it's going to be until, you know, and I usually give people one week. Okay. <laughs> okay. One week. Okay. One week. And then after that one week is over, I give like two buffer days um, plus two buffer days then regular price email, okay, regular price email. It's too confusing. So that's it, two emails a month, plus three social media posts. So, um, you know, uh, minus three weeks before, okay, minus three weeks before the course starts, I say, hey everyone, I'm thinking of teaching this coming up. Uh, what do you think, which, what, what do you, which title do you like the best? And I'll, I'll add comments to my Facebook post this title, this title, this title, this title, and I ask people to like the comments. Please look at my comments below and like the ones that, um, that you, you find most interesting. So that's minus three weeks before the course starts. Minus two weeks before the course starts, right? So this is, this is minus three weeks. Um, minus two weeks, okay? All right, everyone, the XYZ course is ready for, um, for registration, I haven't put the sales page together yet. If you would like to buy the course before the sales page is ready, you can get it at a pre-launch early bird price, okay? And then minus one week is, all right, everyone, sales page is ready for you. Lots of details here, it looks pretty. You know, and, and honestly, my sales pages are relatively, um, <laughs> relatively simple. I mean, if you, if you look at, sorry, if you look at, look, look at a sales page, okay, this is, this is a sales page. The image was found on Unsplash, so it's free. Okay, I this is this was this was a, a voted a voted uh, title. <laughs> My audience voted on this title. This is the best title that that we came up with together. Okay, and then um, you know I gave some context to to the course. Why why is this course you so important to me? Why why am I why do I think this is important to me? And it could be my own story, or it could be I've helped people in this area, and that's why I'm teaching this. Or, you know, or the world is going in this direction. That's why we need this course. You know, the context could be, could be one of two things. And uh, who is this for? You know, who is this for? This is for people who have this or this or this or who are dealing with this situations. And what are you going to be covering in the course? Well, I'm, we're going to be covering this, okay? We're going to be covering this in the course. And then, and then when is the course? The course is, I, have, I haven't even updated this, right? Because this is over and I should update it to say, up, I, I need to update this to, to for example, this is, this is what happens when I have a, uh, once I update the course, uh, it, it'll look like this. Um, what you'll receive, blah, 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 there's no dates here anymore. Whereas here, there are dates. Okay, this is gonna be happening when, and then uh, you're gonna receive these things, and then a bottom line is, hey, this is gonna be fun, and then you can buy it now. And then, uh, you know, some testimonials. So that's, you see how, how shorter, how much shorter the sales page is compared to the ones you've probably been taught to write, right? It, and it works because I, and like I said, these are successful course launches. They're not five figure course launches, but I launch every single month. And uh, actually uh, a few of my courses have already reached five figures that are evergreen like this one. Um, so let me, let me give you the links here. Um, sales page examples. Okay, uh, let, let, me, let me put it on here. Examples, okay, examples are georgecow.com slash JV, that's one example. georgecow.com slash framework is another example. So these are, these are okay, this one, this one has dates on it. As of, as of October 14, I'm gonna update it soon, uh, Evergreen. 
okay? So check those out, and uh, you can feel free to model your sales page after mine. All right. Um, okay. So, you know, Trudy asked a question that I'm sure a lot of you are asking, which is, hey, what if I don't have a big list? And what do I do instead of emails to them? No big list. Emails. Uh, what, what instead of emails? Okay. If you have no big list, right, you should still email your list, obviously, wh whoever they are. But you should um, email uh, friends, colleagues, uh, who wouldn't mind, okay? Who wouldn't mind? And um, ideally, one-on-one -on -one emails is really most uh, most um, thoughtful, right? It's like, hey, Gloria. Um, and you, most of the email can be templated, but 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 say hi to Gloria. Like, hey, Gloria, just want to say how's it going and how's it you now? How's your you know family or whatever, whatever? Or how's the thing we talked about last time? You know, um, I just want to let you know that I'm really excited about this upcoming course uh, that I'm launching, and I, in case in case you know somebody for whom this would benefit, I would be grateful if you could, you know, forward this email to them. And here's, here's the description of the course. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's how you would, and then plus, uh, Facebook ads. That's what I would do. How many of you have already done Facebook ads before or, or know how to do them? I, I really, yeah, Gloria. Awesome. Um, I really recommend it because Facebook ads is the most reliable way. Oh, and, and of course, also, also FB profile posting. So like regular friends type of posting and, and anywhere else, else you're on social. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this is really how you do it. If you don't have, if you don't have a big email list, or when I say big, I mean, really it's all relative. What is big? You know, it's, it's, everybody is smaller. You know, everyone has whatever, you know, you have 50 people. You should email your list, and and but like what I mean is, if you need to 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 make more sales of your courses, the more you should be doing these uh, additional things as well. Okay. Oh, okay, versus are you sending out this file afterwards? Uh, yeah. I, I these are these are really simple notes. I can certainly send them out afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So let me keep going with the questions here. I, original questions. Didn't know how to begin. Okay. So hopefully we we started talking about this, but please keep asking me questions. Um, so that we can get into some more details. I'm sure of my topic, but working on it. Okay, so this is, I just want to talk about this real quick here. If you do, it's like some people tell me, George, I don't, I'm not sure how I can turn my work into one-on-one -on -one courses. Like, it, has any of you ever thought that? Like, how can my, my work is so experiential. How can I turn this into a one-on-one -on -one course? If you, anything that comes out of your mouth <laughs> to a client, can be turned into an online course. So even if like, I'm going to, I'm going to give an example. You lead your, 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 with your clients, you lead shamanic journeys. Okay. Where you, it's all, it's all, it's all experiential. Well, you don't just see a client and go, all right, client, good luck. Good luck on your shamanic journey. Uh, just tell me when you're done. No, you say, well, here's, here's what you're going to do. You're going to close your eyes. I don't know anything about shamanic journeys. I, I've done one before, but you're going to close your eyes. You're going to lay down on the floor. You're going to now imagine this. Every single word that's coming out of your mouth can be put into an online course, right? Let me, let me just, every word out of your mouth, <laughs> mouth to a client is course material. You got it? So this could be a do-it-yourself online course. All right, everyone, I'm going to lead you in the shamanic journey now. And I know that I would rather be doing this with you one on one. But because, you know, it's it's much more affordable to do this as a DIY course, I hope you will follow these steps step by step. And then please comment below <laughs> or tell me, email me how this experience was for you. And I'm in the next session of our online course. I'm going to go over common common questions from clients in when they're not able to get through their shamanic journey or what you know what I mean? So like you have common questions in the next session or, or common pitfalls, or, or you have another session that's about a, a unique type of shamanic journey. Like let's do shamanic journey for, you know, working through a, a, a relationship problem, right? So, so anything that comes out of your mouth to a client is course material. And the question is, how will you, how will you sequence it? What should be session one? What should be session two? What should be session three? Got it? Okay.
And yes, Trudy, thanks for your questions. I'm going to be sure to get to that as well. And thank you, Christopher, for your comment there. Okay, so um, not sure about the costs. Okay, so let me now tell you what, <laughs> what are the technology platforms that I use, right? Tech platforms. Okay, I use YouTube, right? YouTube for my, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go ahead and show you this here. I use a combination of MailChimp. MailChimp delivers. Um, so, okay, I'll, I'll just go through the whole sequence for you to show you. Um, creating courses, I think, is, is the one, yeah. By the way, if you want to actually go through my online course about creating and launching online courses, very meta, um, Tad is, of course, helping me promote it. And if you buy it through me or through, through the, the link that I'm about to give you, um, Tad gets 50%. So you're kind of supporting Tad as well, which I think Tad is totally worth supporting. So if you want to, you know, it's, it's basically 60 bucks. So I think it's pretty worthwhile. Um, hopefully this Q and A is worth 60, but, uh, but this is worth 60 bucks. And this is, let me, let me show you how I, how I show people transparently that this is an affiliate page, right? Sponsored by Tad Hargrave. And I actually, I'm going to update this and say recommended and sponsored by Tad Hargrave. Right. So, um, so someone comes here, I'll just walk you through the, the technology of how this works. Let's say you come here, you read through this. Oh yeah, sounds good, great. Well, yay, great. And you buy this, right? Okay, you click on this, okay? And then it goes to this PayPal page and then you log in, you, you make the purchase. And once you make the purchase, Zapier, okay? I'm not gonna show you Zapier, it's really confusing to, to show it to you. But um, well, I'll, I'll show you just as a sense of it, okay? Zapier, I'm gonna log in here. So I use, so, so thus far, what technologies have we used? Thus far, we have a website, a web page, which a lot of you use WordPress, I use Weebly. Uh, these days, I'm much more excited about Wix, so I might be switching to Wix. I really highly recommend it. If, you're, if, you, if you want a no maintenance, like I've been using Weebly for 10 years. I have had none of the problems that WordPress people have in terms of security updates, maintenance updates, blah, blah, blah. Yes, WordPress does a lot more, but Weebly is the simplest web building platform that I know of and have used it for 10 years. Unfortunately, recently they were bought out by Square. And so, um, okay, so let's see here. Website, okay, recommended is Wix.com. So that's what I recommend now. Um, but Weebly was bought out by Square and they stopped innovating as of a year and a half ago and I'm so disappointed in them. So I'm probably going to switch over to Wix at some point. And Wix is, doesn't do as much as WordPress, but I'll tell you, it is just like it's just, as a solopreneur, if you're not a techie, if you're not great at programming websites and stuff like that or doing those techies type stuff, just go with Wix. I mean, I've run a six-figure business for 10 years using Weebly. Come on, right? And Wix is even more sophisticated than Weebly. So Wix is perfectly fine. And we, Wix keeps on improving itself. So I really am uh, really, really great. Okay so, okay, so website, right, to PayPal, PayPal button, free, uh, no, no monthly fee, except they take, except 2.9% uh, transaction costs, okay? So that's the cost thus far. You don't pay any monthly fee except for your website, whatever your website you pay for. And then when someone buys through PayPal, Let's say they spend $100 with you. PayPal takes $3, okay? So, yeah, it's the cost of doing business. It's fine. Okay, PayPal button. Okay, um, PayPal buy button, okay? All right, so once they buy, um, then what happens is you could, you could uh, I use Zapier. Oh, gosh, skip this here. I use Zapier. Let me just show you my, my sophisticated zaps, okay? So um, I'm not going to talk through this. This is going to take five hours if I want to talk through this. Three hours, actually. But, um, but basically, when, when someone buys in, 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 uh, in Zapier, and then I tell Zapier, hey, listen, if the item of the PayPal button starts with this title, Simple Book self Publish, this is a different course, then if that happens, then add them to a Google spreadsheet. So I have a Google spreadsheet that logs students and what they're buying over time. So I have a database in Google Spreadsheets. And I also add them to MailChimp, right? I add them to MailChimp in my workshop course participants uh, uh, group, right? 
and I add them to a, oh, sorry, I, I add them to the workshop participants list in MailChimp. And inside that list are several groups. One of my groups is called book creation. This is a separate course. Um, so uh, so the, they're added into the group in MailChimp. Okay, so thus far we've got, we've got website, we've got PayPal, we've got Zapier, okay, and then we've got MailChimp. So that Zapier is what, um, is what has replaced my VA. And, and obviously Zapier is much cheaper than hiring a, a human being VA. Um, but if you don't know what, how to use Zapier, you can ha have a VA do it for now. So ha VA, please VA, uh, VA will receive your, your PayPal emails. Hello VA, please, whenever you receive the PayPal email, please add them to the MailChimp group. Okay, so MailChimp list group. And by the way, this is all talked about in detail in my course that you buy for 60 bucks. But I wanna give you an over, overview here for those of you who are wondering, well, what's, what's really involved here? Because Zapier I pay $25 a month for, okay? So really affordable, because $25 a month, I've automated like more than a dozen courses for $25. Really good deal, right? Okay, now MailChimp, I put them into a list, uh, and into a group in the list. And then when they enter a list, okay, when they enter a list, right, um, creating courses. Do I have uh, courses? Do I have that? Yeah, creating online courses. Okay. So when they enter a list, this is, if you bought the course, you know this is what happens, okay? You get put into this online course. Immediately after contacts join the grouping, create online courses, MailChimp sends this out. Okay, MailChimp sends this out, and I want to show you show you the email. Okay. Okay. So the email says, "Hey, you've registered. All right. Would you like this e delivered elsewhere? If so, please reply and let me know." This is still a manual process, but this is really, really rare that someone does this. You know, once once a week, I have to do a quick update on my database. But um, and then and then and then click here for the complete resource guide. Okay. So whoops. So this is the full resource guide for, for, for the whole course. It kind of walks through, walks through how do you, how do you, how do you decide on a course topic? You know, how do you, how do you pre-sell the course, preparing the course itself and all that stuff, 35 pages, right? So this is using, what is this using? This is using Google Docs, which is what? It's free, okay? So thus far, we've got MailChimp list group, we've got Google Docs free for the resource guide, okay? And uh, what else does email say? And then the training videos, three training videos. Okay, where does the training videos hosted? The training videos are hosted on YouTube. Welcome. And that was, the, that was my cat right there too. Um, the cat has passed, unfortunately. So, uh, but you'll, you'll get to see the cat. Um, so this is an unlisted video on YouTube. What does it mean? It means nobody can find this on YouTube except for the people with the exact link, okay, with the exact link. And so I use the MailChimp automated email to send out the three videos, right, for the course. And then if they want an audio download, instead of watching YouTube, they want to just listen on the go, well, I put it on Google Drive. And again, this link is only available, and you could, people can download it by clicking on the, the download button on the upper right here, or they can play it directly. And so we've got Google Docs, We've got YouTube for the videos, okay? We've got uh, Google Drive for the audios. All right, and what else? And then click here for the chat log. So, you know, when I, when I, when I teach the course, I teach it live. Um, when course is taught live, I use Zoom, just like I'm doing right now. And then the chat log from Zoom is also put into, put into here, okay? Put, in, put into Google, a separate Google document. And then what else? And then, oh, at, at the end of the course, okay, at the end of the course, um, at the end of each course, where is it? Your course. Okay, at the end of each course, I have a feedback form at the end of each session. And the feedback form is hosted on, guess what? Google Forms, which is also free. So now you've got Google Forms for feedback. And this is my entire technology platform. For online courses. There you go. Now, uh, Kara says, how do you convert video to audio? 
when recording on Zoom, it automatically gives you both video and audio separate file. Okay, so that's how I do it. Um, okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, Gabrielle says, okay. Oh, I want to talk about Udemy since Trudy, Trudy had asked about that. Okay, so I don't recommend Udemy to be your main course platform, okay? Okay to put courses there but don't let it be the main place. Why? Can't, can't collect emails, can't communicate with students about other courses, consider spam on Udemy, right? Um, I mean, yes, technically you can have a, what's called like a bonus announcement at the end of your course to talk about your other courses, but almost nobody, okay? Almost nobody makes it to the end of any Udemy course. So that's really important to know. People usually, seriously, and so no one's gonna see your bonus announcement at the end, dude, okay? So, so it's okay to put it there because, you know, let Udemy do its thing, right? They, they, might, they might, you know, your thing might go viral there, who knows? But I really recommend selling courses yourself so that you can collect email addresses and tell your students about additional courses that you have. I've had several clients come to me, right? And say, George, I've built up a huge Udemy audience. I have had a client who had like tens of thousands of Udemy students. He's made six figures on Udemy. But the problem is it's not sustainable because now he can't communicate with those students about additional things. His, his entire audience is stuck on Udemy. He can't bring them out. That's not good. You gotta have the control over communicating with your own people, okay? So um, Gabriel asks, how do you guide um, Gabrielle, Gabrielle. How do you guide the production of your lessons or material till you feel that it's at a point that someone will find valuable? This is one of the biggest lessons I teach in, in, in the course itself, right? And this is why I talked about the concentric model thing. Um, you are giving yourself too much pressure about what is valuable. I promise you, almost every single one of you is doing this. I mean, I was doing this and I still do this. Now I'm like, oh my God, I gotta put more into the course because otherwise how, here's, here's the secret of, of course creation, okay? One of the secrets. People, and I'm gonna just turn, turn this off here. People want something easy and light. They, they bought the course, have with the fan, just like, this course is a lot like New Year's resolutions, right? You buy a course having wonderful ideas of what you could do with the course and having this wonderful, I'm going to change my life with a $60 course. And then once you get into the course, you're like, oh, I hope this is entertaining. I hope this is easy. I hope this is short so I can feel like I finished the course. That's what people want, Gabrielle. Tell me, if you, let, let me know if this makes sense. So what people would rather have from you, what consider valuable to them, is if they could get like, two or three valuable, interesting pieces of information from the course that's actionable, my God, that's great. And plus, I'm not talking about selling $2,000 courses, right? That would be called a mentoring program. You know, that would be much more appropriate. But when I say do-it-yourself courses, the pricing, let's talk about pricing. If you're not sure how to price it, let me just make it really, really simple for you. Price it between 15, between 10 and $40 per course, per course hour. 10 and $40 per course hour, right? So for example, um, you know, my, my course on creating courses is three hours and I price it at 60, so that's $20 per course hour. So 10 and 40 bucks per course hour, got it? So at, at that kind of pricing, again, even if it's $40, if, if, I can take, if I can take one actionable thing away from $40, that's cheaper than meeting with you one-on-one. -on -one. Think about this. It's cheaper than meeting with you one-on-one -on -one, and I get one actionable thing that I'm gonna keep using in my life, that's worth, worth way more than 40 bucks. Got it? So of course, you're not gonna say one actionable thing only in the course. You'll probably have two, five, let's say five ideas in one, in one hour session. You'll have five actionable ideas and everyone will pick one of them that they, they wanna take away. 
Some people will take all five and go, my God, this one session is enough for me. I'm, I'm full. Okay. So I hope this helps. Any other questions? We've got five minutes left. I've been talking the whole time and I, I want to welcome, uh, if, if you have a question that's hard to type out, please unmute. And I'd love to, to ask, uh, to answer your question now. Um, I have a question. Yes. Hi, Trudy. Um, <coughs> I have a WordPress website. Okay. And um, so should I use a plugin on there for the course? And which one is the best one you recommend? Oh, okay. You know, I wish I had more experience with WordPress. I don't have a recommendation for you, unfortunately. Um, do, does anybody have a recommendation? Oh, you know what? Uh, it's like on the tip of my tongue here. Um, I actually have, have clients who, who host courses on WordPress themselves. So I will find out and I'll, I'll include it in the notes of the replay. Yeah. So get back to you on that. Um, so gar garlic, is that right? Is that your name? That's a cool name. Um, nice. So it says, are, if it sounds like, okay, so, ah, yeah, that's a great question. And then Christopher, I'll, I'll get to yours next after this. So it sounds like you're consistently creating, okay, let me share my screen again, sorry. It sounds like you're consistently creating new content. Is this creating a lot more work than relaunching the same course repeatedly? Well, yeah, <laughs> it, certainly, it certainly is. Um, it keeps me on my toes. It gets me, like once I create a course, I'm like, oh, I could create another course on this or another. It, it, you'll, you'll notice this happening with you as you create. When you create, you'll have more to create. Okay, so you actually want you actually find yourself wanting to create even more all the time. Um, so uh, so yes, I do create new, but I have a I have kind of a uh, a two year um, course schedule now that I've I've finally put together. Sorry about that uh, course schedule. Here we go. So basically, annually I teach these these courses. Okay, in the even years like twenty twenty, I'll be I'll be teaching these courses. In the odd years, like 2019, 2021, uh, I'll be teaching these courses, and then I have additional, additional ideas. Um, so basically, uh, I, I already have, oops, sorry about this. Where, 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 is my, where are my notes? Here we go. I already have a few courses that I've redone, and it's really fun to redo courses because I already have all the material, but now I'm just improving on it with additional research, additional case studies, and make it look more, um, you know, yeah, make it make it look even better, etc. So yes, but yeah, you don't like I said, you don't have to launch something every month like I do. Even if you launch one a quarter. By the way, I, I'll say this: I really, really, really recommend that all of you really think about launching courses soon. Uh, if you already have launched your one-to-one -one service, or, or if you don't want to, like I have some stay-at-home moms. I say, you know, I I can't do one-on-one. -on -one. My kids won't allow me to do. You know, then then their business model is launching courses. Okay, so when to launch courses as soon as possible. And here's the key, key, I'm gonna do this all caps. Please get into a rhythm, I can't miss, I can't spell that, of launching courses. Okay, so, okay, and here's the thing. Even if people People don't buy the first few. Give, give it away to your best clients and favorite people. Okay? All right? Because you got to get into this habit of launching light courses. Again, three-session courses, two-session courses, four-session courses. Pick your number or even a one-session course. And then um, once you get into that rhythm, your audience will say, oh, Trudy is serious about these courses. So they're going to be more, more used to your announcing it on a regular basis and they'll start buying it. Okay. So I hope that this is helpful. Um, all right. One more question from Christopher and then we will go because we're right at the, at the end of the hour here.
Christopher, sorry, not all caps here. <laughs> um, can a course just be one session or best to put it in a couple parts? It can be once, you know, the first uh, year I was doing courses, they were all one session courses at two different time zones. I would just repeat the course at a different time zone so that uh, people, you know, at all around the world could, could actually do it. Um, last thing I will say, um, no, I'm, I'm not going to go into that. I think that's too much right now. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. I hope, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you all want to kind of get into all the details of it, I hope you'll decide to, to buy my online course on creating courses and Tad gets 50% of this. So we all get to support Tad as well. And I, and you get all the, you know, further additional details, handholding one-on-one. -on -one. And more importantly, I think you'll get to come to my bonus Q and A calls and, and we will, do additional handholding on those calls where you can ask me any questions. And on those calls, I, I, I um, you know, to actually communicate with you when, when, especially if you can unmute. So is this useful uh, session for you all? I hope this was helpful. I know I, we communicate a lot of, a lot of stuff here and, uh, but I will be sure to uh, send out these notes along with, along with the replay. And um, that's all for today. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to hearing about your progress. If you want to let me know your updates about launching your online courses, I will cheer you on. So, all right, everyone, take care. Bye for now.